Hi, my name is Dave. Today I'd like to give you a few hints and tricks for getting the most out of your Celestron StarSense telescope. This is a wonderful bit of technology. It might need a little help here and there. Let me give you some advice that might be helpful. This video is aimed at someone who's had some experience with their StarSense. Perhaps you found a dozen or two dozen objects in the sky and maybe you're a little bit confused because some of the objects it pointed you to uh, you looked at the telescope and there's nothing there. It appears to be nothing there. So you thought maybe there's something wrong with your eyes. There's nothing wrong with your eyes. The telescope is working properly. Everything is working properly. But the software has guided you to an area of the sky that's either impossible in your location or with this telescope, or it's given you some sort of misleading information. Especially if you're trying to observe under a light polluted sky near a big city, you're going to find some objects that are just too faint to see. I have some possible solutions for you. Stay tuned. When you're calibrating during the daytime, be sure to zoom in. Like I'm going to focus on the top of that tree. It's really not far away enough, but it'll demonstrate what I'm talking about. You zoom in on the tree. Make sure you stay on the top of the tree right there to the maximum magnification. Get as close as you can. Don't be afraid to recalibrate anytime you need to. If the scope is acting a little funny, not quite putting it where you want, you can recalibrate. Just find a nice bright star, click the Star Sense button. Now um, say needs alignment. The camera is still going to be centered over the mirror, so you don't need to do that over again. Click Next. Then you just find a bright star in the sky, brightest thing you can find. It has to be bright enough to show up on the, on the camera screen. And then uh, point your telescope at it, nice and precisely, put it in the telescope, and then continue with the alignment, just like during the daytime. The app in the menu has night vision mode, which turns the screen red. Um, that's a little bit helpful but it's much more imp important to just turn the brightness on the whole thing down. Turn your screen brightness down. That's more important than the red light. One of the first things you want to do to help you use your telescope is get a pair of binoculars. Binoculars can be a lot of help when you're doing astronomy. Uh, if you have some around the house or you can borrow some or whatever, these uh, will be a great deal of assistance to you. Don't use anything this small though. These are just too small. They really don't help very much. If you want more advice on uh, buying some binoculars, you don't have to spend a fortune. See my video linked in the description. That will help you to see things that are uh, in the sky that are very large. Clusters of stars like the, the Hyades. You really can't even see the Hyades in this telescope because they're so big. Uh, even at the lowest power, this telescope magnifies too much. If you have your telescope pointing at something that's a large cluster or an asterism, you can locate them by turning on the red dot finder, looking through the red dot finder, that will tell you where you're pointed in the sky. So you're using the computer now to tell you what's up in the sky. Then you can use your binoculars and look up in that part of the sky and see what it is that's up there. So you want a simple pair of binoculars to help you get around the sky. Another thing you need is a book. Uh, some good star charts. I recommend this book here. This is uh, this is an older edition of this book, which is I love it because you can buy this cheap. You can get this for ten dollars, maybe even less. It's called Night Watch by Terence Dickinson. I mean, some of the information might be a, a little bit dated, but the star charts are the important thing, and the star charts will not change. These star charts are superb. These will really help you find your way around the sky. The app is not very smart in some respects. It will tell you that there's a good thing to look at over there and then there's also a really good thing to look at over there. And if you go through their list you'll be jumping all over the place and it'll have you all over the sky. Uh, this will help you to kind of localize a little bit. So here I'm in the app and I'm centered on M42 which is the Orion Nebula. It's right there. And in the vicinity are some other things, a lot of other things. And one of the coolest things in this area is this thing. It's called Sigma Orionis. That little, that's the Greek symbol, Sigma there. 
right there. There's also this thing over here. Let me show you this. This is that right there. That is IC434, which is the Horsehead Nebula. That's a horsehead right there. That is something you will never ever see with a four-inch telescope under any skies. But the app is happy to tell you that it's there. Um, and the app is also quite happy to ignore this one, Sigma Orionis, which it doesn't appear to be any big deal, but it is. If you click on this, it'll tell you all sorts of things about what it is. It's a quadruple star system and all sorts of cool stuff. This is one of the neatest things to look at in the sky. The app isn't going to tell you that. It's not misleading, it's just kind of stupid. It's not telling you that that's the coolest thing you can see near the Orion Nebula other than the nebula and the trapezium in it. So how can you get past that? Well, that's where a book like this comes in. This is the book Nightwatch, the one I recommend. And there's, there's a picture of Orion right there. If you look on this chart from Nightwatch, you'll see M42 right there. And it'll tell you about the Orion Nebula, etc. There's a lot of other stuff around here, a lot of information here. One of the coolest things to see though is this one, it's called Sigma Orionis, it's right there. It talks about a quadruple star, etc, etc. In the app, if you're on M42, it won't tell you about that unless you know enough to click on that and find it, Sigma Orionis. Okay, so it knows I'm on M42, now if I want to get to Sigma Orionis, I just drive over there. It'll tell me where I'm pointing. And it tells me now that I found Sigma Orionis. It'll tell me all about it if I want to hear it. So think of the app as your GPS navigator gets you around and think of the star chart in the night watch as your tour guide that tells you what's cool to see. You probably already have a couple of eyepieces but if you have a need for another one uh, don't spend a lot of money on one. Buy uh, an inexpensive one. I've got a link to one that I recommend. Uh, it's a four millimeter by SV Boney that's uh, about 14 bucks or so. Don't spend a lot of money and don't invest in a whole new set of eyepieces or anything until you've really, really gotten used to what you've already got. These will work fine for you for quite some time. People are going to recommend that you get a buy a dim red flashlight. You can buy one for $40 or you can make one. Take an ordinary flashlight like this cover it up with a layer of paper and you've got a dim flashlight you can paint it red too if you want to you can paint that with uh, red fingernail polish and that'll work just fine for you here's another good book this is called the Edmund Sky Guide this has a remarkably good price on it I mean it's an old book but it's still classic and still very useful and the price is really good because it's free you may be tempted to go crazy and buy a bunch of filters for your eyepieces and stuff there's only one filter that I would recommend, especially just for a beginner, and that's this one, the uh, UHC filter. This is an inexpensive but good quality brand, SV Boney. I'd recommend that. That's about $30. That's a lot of money for you to spend. Um, and I'm not sure if it's really quite worth it. But if you live in an urban, light-polluted location, these can be helpful. Don't waste your money on a bunch of extra colored filters or any other fancy stuff. It's something simple like this, screws right into the bottom of the eyepiece like that. Something simple like this can be helpful, but is highly optional. Instead of spending money on all sorts of fancy eyepieces and accessories and stuff, save your money, save it up, and buy a bigger telescope. Buy an 8-inch Dobsonian. That's what you really want to do. If you're trying to use this mount at high power, you're going to probably find that it's very, very shaky. Try this. Put a heavy weight in here. That will help to stabilize. And if you really have to have something more stable, get some vibration isolation pads. 
like that. You don't have to buy the ones from Celestron. Those are expensive. I've got a link to some less expensive ones. In the menu here, you can click on, of course, find moon planets, brightest stars, double stars, etc. Deep sky objects. These things are probably... The deep sky objects, the messy eye objects are going to be a little out of range unless you're far from the city lights. And especially the Caldwell objects. Really out of the grasp of a 4-inch scope. Uh, maybe if you have one of the bigger ones, like an 8-inch or a 10-inch daub, you can certainly go through that list quite, a, quite successfully. Constellations and asterisms, on the other hand, those are things that are really nice even from the city. Constellations are actually easier from the city because you don't have as many confusing stars to look at. But if you click on this, it will uh, tell you the constellations. You can go look at them. When you're viewing through the scope, you can determine the constellation by squeezing out like that. It will show you the constellation, and then you can learn more about the constellation. It's really a good idea to know what constellation you're in. It's kind of like when you're driving across country, you want to know what state you're in, just for the heck of it, and because there might be interesting stuff around there. Asterisms are um, really usually very large groups of uh, cons either constellations or groups of stars or patterns. Like this is a teapot. This is uh, in the constellation Sagittarius, but it's really how you recognize Sagittarius. You can't see something like that through the telescope. The telescope looks at a little tiny center, the tiny center area of that. So uh, you can't really see that whole asterism, uh, maybe naked eye you can see that, or with your binoculars you might be able to see some of the asterisms. Let's see what else they have. Oh yeah, they got some cool ones. Little Dipper, Kite. This is Booties. That's how you recognize Booties. That's a big chunk of sky there, so you're not going to be able to look at that with your telescope. That's a naked eye type of thing. This mount is an Altaz mount. All of the star sense scopes are Altaz, which means they go up and down, and around and around. One of the tricks to these scopes is that when you get straight up or near straight up, they get very difficult. And if you're trying to use the app and the app is you're trying to see something, the app can it knows what it's doing. It's trying to point you in the right direction, but the mount will just make it impossible to get there. So you get these arrows going all sorts of different ways and things, and it'll try and point you around, get you to go around this side. You can see how this thing just won't point quite straight up. You can play some tricks with shortening the legs, but uh, be careful. You don't want the dang thing to tip over on you. So be careful with those tricks. Best thing to do is just wait um, 20 minutes or half an hour and the thing will have moved around long enough that you might be able to see it. Once you've got your phone calibrated, it's in the dock, once you've got it all set up, don't mess with these controls back in the back anymore to set it left and right. But you can undock it and you can take that and make phone calls with it and so forth uh, until later in the evening. And then you put it back in, it'll probably be okay, probably be close enough. But you might want to recalibrate on a star uh, or something like that. Don't mess with the back controls anymore. I hope you found this advice to be helpful for using your StarSense telescope. Thank you for watching.